A special significance is attached to each piece of regalia. The jeweled sword of state is presented to the queen by the archbishop, who bids her use it for the punishment of evildoers and for the protection of the law abiding. Her Majesty moves to the altar to offer the sword, signifying that the crown places it at the disposal of the church. Upon the Queen's wrists are placed the armils, bracelets which symbolize the bond which unites her with her people. Now the robe royal is put upon the Queen with the words, the Lord clothe you with the robe of righteousness and with the garments of salvation. The orb of gold, signifying the dominion of the cross over the world. Mount Woolton, as Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, offers the glove, symbolizing gentleness in levying taxes. Now the royal scepter, the ensign of kingly power and justice. The rod with the dove, signifying that equity and mercy are never to be forgotten. Now follows the supreme climax of the ancient ritual. With St. Edward's son, the crown of England, the archbishop performs the simple, yet the most significant ceremony of the queen's coronation. elevated by the combined power of church and state, the queen moves to the throne to receive the homage of her princes and peers. The Duke of Edinburgh comes to vow lifelong allegiance to his queen. image draws to a close and following the celebration of Holy Communion which forms the framework of the service, the Queen moves for a short recess to St. Edward's Chapel. Within the chapel, the Queen's robe royal is changed for a robe of purple velvet and her crown replaced with the imperial state crown. When she appears to join her procession, the service of coronation has ended.
nine processions which accompanied the guests of the Abbey join into one enormous column to advance before Her Majesty on the journey back to the palace. Queen Salote of Tonga waves a warm greeting. Whitehall heads the procession. Marching in perfect precision are the Royal Marines. Through Trafalgar Square moves the coach. On towards Piccadilly, the first stage of the extended route through the capital. Already the head of the procession is passing up East Carriage Drive and through Marble Arch. Men from nearly 50 lands over which the Queen holds sway are united in the mammoth parade that is the Empire's tribute to their sovereign lady. Riding in the great procession are four field marshals, Montgomery, Ironside, Alexander and Auchinleck. coach moves into the mall, and those who cheered Her Majesty's procession to the Abbey acclaim her again. Elizabeth, the crowned Queen of Great Britain and the Commonwealth. triumph, the Queen returns to her palace, which she left more than five hours before. As the coach moves away from sight, the crowd surges forward in a spontaneous gesture of affection. Now, to delight the thousands below, the Queen and her family step onto the balcony. And with what pride shall those who watch recall in after years, I saw the Queen on Coronation Day. The royal party glance up as squadrons of RAF jet fighters sweep past in tribute. Elizabeth, so proud a name she bears, one that spelled greatness for our country in another age. Elizabeth crowned the head of a great family of nations. Long may she reign. <laughs>